That is Mrs. Peter McKay. That's what I'll call her. It's easier to say. Her, her actual name is Nazanin Afsham Jam, married Peter McKay on the weekend, I believe. Krista Erickson follows all of this news uh, from Toronto. You used to follow all this stuff in Ottawa with me, Krista, but you're in Toronto now. Th these stories on the McKay wedding, though, they caught your eye, didn't they? Well, they did. Uh, was it a news story? It sure was, Brian. But did it warrant some of the gratuitous coverage that it received I'm not sure it did. And what's even more telling uh, are the thinly veiled pot shots that were contained in some of the coverage. Let's take for yeah, instance. Yeah, I, I, I was surprised by some of that. You've brought some examples of, of things that uh, that annoyed you. Let's take a look at some of them. Well, this uh, this is all from the National Post, our friends at the Post. So, for instance, on January 6th, the headline. Uh, was Nazanin Afshan Jam a model of achievement? And the piece goes on to say, Stop Child Executions, uh, which is the human rights organization that Ms. Afshan Jam founded, has a logo that dramatically waves a flag for its tragic cause. It features a stick figure akin to the picture of a man on public washroom doors, only this one is hanging despondently from a noose with a crooked neck and clutching a teddy bear. It gets attention, and so does Ms. Afshan Jam. What exactly is the National Post trying to say in making that point? She gets attention. I think what the Post is trying to say is she gets attention because she's attractive. All right, so what? Get over it. There's another piece I want to highlight, if I could, please, Brian, yeah, for your viewers. Ahead. Also from the National Post, January 6th. Peter McKay and Nazanin Afshin Jam married in a, quote, quaint Mexican chapel. That was yeah, the headline. I don't get that. You know, quaint. Is it scare quotes? Are they questioning it? Why, why should we be incredulous that the chapel was quaint? Exactly. It infers uh, to me um, an undercurrent of resentment or something strange. I don't quite get there, it. There did seem to be a lot of, um, I don't know, people being annoyed that they were married or jealousy or uh, let's just take pot shots. I, I figure I don't care who you are. You're getting married. Congratulations. Mazel tov. Enjoy. I'm going to wish you all the best. Exactly. Well, if, if you think that example is objectionable, take a look at this next one. Also from the National Post, dated January 5th. The headline, before Nazanin Afshan Jam, who were the other women in Peter oh. McKay's love life? It yeah. goes on to say, as the news hits that Peter McKay has secretly married Iranian-Canadian pilot slash model slash beauty queen slash singer slash human rights activist Nazanin Afshin Jam, we take a look back at the surprisingly public love life of the MP, formerly known as Parliament's most eligible bachelor. Although McKay rose to prominence as the last leader of the PC party before it finally and definitively merged with Stephen Harper's Canadian Alliance to form the modern Conservative Party of Canada in 2003, it is often his love life that has captured the attention of the public in recent years. What I want to ask you and your viewers, Brian, is, is it his love life that has captured the public's attention or has it captured the media's attention? Well, to find out the answer to that question, Brian, why don't we look no further than the comment pages that accompany these pieces yeah. in the National Post? Here's what some of the readers had to say about the coverage. The approach of common journalists has all along been to keep the readership away from the serious matters of life of nation, no wonder they are found planting news and pictures of insignificant people and of much less insignificant occasions. Otherwise, we as Canadians have nothing to do with this marriage and its ceremony. We are enormously being affected by the economic plight of the land. From BC Girl, who cares, right? It's safe to say the majority could give a beep about this, yet... Here we are, mindlessly reading garbage about McKay from someone named Steve17. I'm always amazed how out of touch with reality the journalists in Canada are. Thank you, and thank you, other commentator, for stating who cares. From someone named W. Wright, what does this have to do with anything? This is his private life. The media should respect his privacy. How are we going to get good people into politics as long as newspapers think stories like this are a good idea? And finally, my favorite one from someone named Captain Contrail. Who the bloody hell cares? Perhaps those in the media, their shills and other political hacks should truthfully write about their previous friends and lovers, gossip mongers, usually seen with their groupies in the high school cafeteria advancing to the 
office water cooler are oftentimes insecure and unhappy individuals. Some wind up in the media. You know, Brian, it sounds <laughs> to me like that last writer has actually spent time uh, in fantasy land on the Rideau because that's a rather apt description. You know, our friend Joe Warmington of the Toronto Sun wrote a piece on this as well. And essentially, he said, the smartest thing that Minister McKay might have done is marry this woman. It could put him one step closer to 24 Sussex. And I'll well, tell you something, you know Brian. what? Yes? I, I've been saying, look, it's a legitimate news story. People are interested. He's a significant minister. But I, I, some of this stuff, I think, goes over the top. We ran the story. We played the photographs. Krista, we'll have to leave it there. But you're bang on, and so was that commentator, in calling this the biggest high school cafeteria. You can watch her thank each you, and every day on Canada Live. Chris Derrickson, thank you. Thank you.